All right. Almost like the Broncos. <laughs> Denver Broncos, Mile High View. No commercials, no bullshit, no death threats. Uh, I just want to say, Colby, uh, his player breakdown, he had to shut comments off, and there's a lot of good people that comment there because uh, the toxic fans, and if they weren't toxic, you wouldn't get the death threats. So when we say toxic, it's it's real toxic. You know, I just want to say as a disclaimer, we're not a, uh, a sunshine, rainbows, up your ass, uh, feel good platform. Uh, we're a, a GM centric platform that's uh, into building dynasties. We we don't, you know, cheer cheerlead uh, princess quarterbacks as that's the end all be all. We try to build dynasties, and we can see around, you know, throughout history and currently what you know needs to be done to get the job done. Uh, currently. <clears throat> We just did uh, a video on the exit of John Elway, but like Trotsky, you know, still walking around the White House or whatever, it seems like the ghost of Elway is still walking around Dove Valley, yet there are some moves that make me wonder if he's still got some sort of an umbilical cord in there. And I best, you know, I know it's going to take a while, but uh, the, the new ownership, and management <clears throat> there at Dove Valley better get it through their head. They need to cut that in biblical core and get that severed. Because patchwork orange, um, you know, yesterday's used to be has beens, band aids, uh, get rid of depth. Uh, that's all got to go. Because if it doesn't go, all you people are going to be gone. It's just a matter of time. Uh, we're, we're calculating two years if you guys can't get it together, the natural course of things. So, um, so anyway, I just want to say one other thing. Uh, for those people that don't want to say, you know, don't want to recognize a problem, discuss the problem, try to uh, isolate it and learn from it, move on. And, and if you don't want to say anything, you want to put your head in the sand, keep your mouth shut. Don't come here running your mouth. You don't want to say anything it's just so negative well you know yes admitting you're an alcoholic yeah i guess it's negative but there's a healing process that you have to admit it before you can move on and it may be negative negative. and right now the broncos aren't making smart moves it's like elway as usual i call it elway as usual and it will come and these chickens will come home the roost they always do so we we nip it in the butt before this, you know, before everybody's shocked. Like, oh, my God, the bills. Oh, my God. You could, who would have thought that? Well, we thought that. And what we're seeing with the moves is just typical, like El, the way Elway used to run this stuff. So, uh, Colby, why don't you go? You did a video. Talk about uh, the unkindly cuts. Just name uh, off the cuts. Well, um, you have, I mean, I don't have the full cuts here with me, but I just wanted to name a few that really That's stood out to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they traded Malik Reed earlier today. I don't agree with the decision at all. They cut Natay Moody. I don't agree with that decision and cutting Seth Williams too, because if Cortland Sutton or Jerry Judy gets hurt, who's your boundary receiver? Well, I'm just going to be bold enough to say Virgil. I'm just going to be bold enough to say it uh, when it comes to Jerry Judy. If he stinks up the joint, you know what you would have had? You would have had a you – know, let me just ask you this. Just this, uh, let, me, let me just run this by you. Does anything Judy do – does anything that you've seen Judy do, do as a receiver, does anything pop? Does anything pop? Does this guy pop no. at all? Okay. No, no, because I don't think he has – a lot of people in the organization directly in that organization say he has great route running. But I, 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 I can't I, talk. I'm talking about eyeballs. I'm talking about what does eyeballs, the eyeballs uh, He hasn't really stood out to me at all now. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't give a shit about the the talk. I've heard. I, I've no more excuses. I've heard enough excuses. I was. I was. I was. I was talking about a film centric point of view of looking at his route running, his hand, his yeah. hand catching. I just. I just. Okay. Go ahead. Does sorry. it pop? Does he just? Does he just come off? Does he pop? He doesn't come off like a C.D. Lamb, a Justin Jefferson, Chase Claypool, guys like that. Oh, you're not even that. <laughs> Seth Williams. That guy, to me, pops. He's got some pop to him. Okay? K.J. Hamler. K.J. Hamler He's got has some a pop, pop to, to him. him. Yep. Okay? Cor- Corlin Sutton has He's some pop He's got some to pop him. to him. Okay? So my, what I'm saying is if this guy can't get it together, if, if he's getting ghosted, I mean, he was getting ghosted as a third wheel by... Third, you know, I mean, like I said, Jesse Bates ghosted him out on the field. They just he just took him out. Now, if he stinks up the joint and he come week six, I think it's time to put in Seth Williams. It, it, but you can't do that now. I call, I texted Eddie. The Saints need receivers. I said this: you need to pick this guy up. You absolutely need to pick this guy up. He'll be a starter on your team, guaranteed. And if 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 it turns out that this guy has equal or more to Jerry Judy at the end of the season, I'm going to be livid. I'm going to be livid. I mean, I'm not, I I mean, there's nothing I can say because I, I've been two years with Jerry Judy. I, I haven't really seen anything that jumps off the screen to me. I mean, when you're in college, it's a different story because they oh, don't. They're playing ten yards off. You look great, don't you? Oh, I ran a great. And I did, and I did film review on that too. Um, it's on my channel, and it's on this guy's channel too. I did film review on that, and it, again, it doesn't. At the end of the day, there's other receivers in that draft that I wanted even before Jerry Judy. So it doesn't really surprise me that he's turned out this way, and. Uh, I don't think just because they got Russell Wilson, his career is going to take a 360. I think that you have to put the work in on your own. Has he? Let 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 me just be fair here, okay? Has he has he put in the work in the uh, film uh, the the film sessions? Has has he done that? I have to see it to believe it. I, I mean, I can't go into this season and say he's going to have a breakout year just because we got Russell Wilson. I have to see it to believe it. He has to prove to me that he's got better at route running. He's getting out of his breaks fast. He's able to catch the ball. He's able to go into the middle of the field and afraid of getting hit. Take the Um, Hamler hit. Take the Hamler hit. Exactly. And I don't want him going on social media complaining that Drew Locke threw the ball too hard like he did two years ago. So I don't want to hear that nonsense again. Well, he, he won't dare do that. Russell Wilson. With Russell Wilson. But he he can do it. Drew Locke. He'd like to do it, but, you know. He wouldn't dare do it. So, yeah, I had to say something because um, I'm not a believer. I'm sorry. I'm just not. not I'm not either. I'm not I, I'm not a believer. If he proves me wrong, I will come on here and say that I was wrong. But is do I have a high chance of that happening from what I've seen? No. And no. just like the guy that we pa- was set up uh, his bags packing, it's another guy I said, this is a direct. Trinity Benson. Trinity Benson. This is a this guy's another direct threat to to Judy, and we can't have that. What's long as Elway's in the building? That's an Elway. Pick. I think I think another guy too that um, hasn't really panned out, but he started off his career pretty well. His rookie year was uh, Tyree Cleveland. He had that game where he oh, was he's been, catching he, balls. He has been injured. He has been injured. He's an injury prone. But I, I'm just talking about. Well, I'm just saying he's, pop. he's he's injured. He's I know, but I'm talking about his rookie year when he was on the field. Yeah, he, he actually made some plays. Yeah, yeah, he looked good. And then they pulled him. And then they pulled him. I know when he was made... starting to look better than yeah than Judy. Judy. Yeah. As soon as he was like, we even made a film about that where you know Judy's on the sideline, and Cleveland looked like ten times the receiver. I, I don't. I do not believe in Judy. I'm sorry. It's I not. Blame you. It's not the quarterbacks. I can if, no. if it was no, it's Cleveland not. wouldn't have looked good. You know? Yeah, I know. So that's the receiver. It just you know, I'm I'm also trying to thread this this Elway thing that just we just can't seem to get rid of it. Can't seem to get rid of it. This brings us to Glasgow. The whole contract thing before any of the coaches got here, me and you talked, we railed on that. 
And now this is why we rail. This is why we don't just put our heads in the sand and just hope. This is why we actually look into things. I'm just going to put my head in that sand and just hope. No, that, that, we don't do that here. We railed against the Glasgow restructure. And if you wonder why, here's an example right in your face. You get rid of the depth, you get rid of the development for a Band-Aid, a has-been, a used-to-be. John Elway, it's just Elway as usual. Elway as usual. I don't think anybody out there, and I, can we all agree that Graham Glasgow has been a major disappointment? Can we just all agree on that? Well, I mean, For what he, you're paying he, him. For what you're paying him and for what you got for him has been a major, major disappointment. Uh, Ron O'Leary 2.0, does that ring, ring any bells? Like I said, does that ring any bells? Um, I said that in my video. But you, you had a guy in the team, Moody. And, and, and this, is, this is something that I wanted to run past you. What systems are you running? Yeah, I, I can't figure what, it you, out. You, you can't. You have agile offensive linemen, and then you have power gap guards and power gap linemen. And you're going to try and mesh, mesh those together again for the how how many years have we been doing this and been going through it? I'm getting Seven so sick years. of the facts. I'm getting so sick of the facts. I, I got my fingers crossed. That that. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to go after that. <laughs> we're, we're we're better than that. Fingers crossed. We're, we're we're better than that. I I don't want to go after these fans because I just I just don't want to do what's that. I'm so sick and I'm, 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 it, it, I'm I know you're sick and tired. tired. I'm sick of the excuse making. I'm 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 just sick of the excuse making. I'm 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 sick of of hearing. The next excuse, the next overhype. I'm sorry, and I'm not just talking about fans. I'm talking about the the other organization. I'm just I'm just. I, was, I would say I don't want to worry about the other platforms. What we I know, need to do I is know, I do. I get. I just get sick of the oversell and and. The I know. I, I I understand. I understand. But uh, but me and you, we got to just stick to what we do best, and that's talking football. We got to stop worrying about the fans. Yeah, true. We gotta stop worrying. As to worrying about the eight other channels, what we need to do is hold the organization accountable. What we do best is film review. Yeah, so I guess forget about it's that. It's true. Forget because we're the that. only ones doing it. We're the only ones doing it. They have the guts. Yeah. To do it. We're the only ones that have the guts yeah. to do it. So yeah. we'll just stand tall and stand our ground and, and try to get this this mess mm -hmm. finally. And then we know it's going to take time in the right direction. So back to Glasgow. <clears throat> Yeah. You said injury prone, but let, or, yeah, Moody, you said Moody injury, injury prone, but isn't Glasgow also injury prone as well? But I, the, but then what did I say after the fact? I said, who has the more upside? Upside, Brad yeah. Glasgow? Or, Moody. And, and, and then you, Clearly. And then you had George, and then you had George Payton come out during a press conference and says, the reason why we didn't re-sign Sam Martin is because we decided to go with the more upside punter. Okay, can you apply that to Natain Moody then? Yeah. Like, it makes no sense. It makes no logical sense. Well, it goes like, back to that contract they had a re before. And, and, well, that's, what, and then that's what I had to make. And, and I, I, said, I said, wait a minute. This is Here's Elway interfering, running interference. I said, well, don't you think your coaching staff should get a say on before you do that? Now, now they're, they had to do that. We knew this was going to come back and bite them in the ass. We knew it. And here it is. It's it's crazy. It, it, it's crazy. Am I shocked that we got rid of Moody? No, because we've got we have gotten rid of players in Denver that have been good depth pieces and have gone to other teams and have had success. Does Isaiah McKenzie ring a bell? Does Khalif Raymond? He had a few good years here and there, not consistently, but in spurts, uh, you know. Guys like that, does Ben Garland ring any bells? He was, you know, he was a quality player for the San Francisco's offensive line as a swing uh, backup depth piece for that offensive line. I mean, just it's it's um, it, it, I think what it came down to with it. And, and this is the part that pisses me off is that whole contract situation. It, it, it's absolutely absurd that we continue to hold on to has been's used to be's all the Yesterday's. above like you were saying. And just not stick with a guy, you know, and, and the $6 million cap it is a big cap it. I mean, you, you, you I, I understand that, but man, you, you, you took a big risk 
doing that instead of sticking with a developmental. Yes, he had an injury history, but that guy was forming and coming into his own. And I thought that right now, Nate Moody is the better option than it has been used to be over the hill, Graham Glasgow. So, so why did Detroit get rid of Glam, uh, uh, Mr. Glasgow? Well, number one, they saw he was starting to regress. Uh, sorry, starting to regress, number one. Number two, they drafted a center out at Arkansas, who I was high on, Frank Ragnow, who I don't think a lot of people know of. I, I encourage everybody, if you guys watch Hard Knocks and all that stuff, go watch it. Yeah, we, we, just, we just can't well, develop. We just can't develop. I And I also encourage, if you guys want to watch the All-22, I'm not going to say – it's your if if you want to spend your money, but if if it was me, I would go get the NFL Plus, get get the yearly subscription like me and him have, and get the All Twenty Two. I encourage anyone, even if we had difference of opinions, go get the All Twenty Two and look at it for yourself. Objectively. That's all I got to say. Objectively. 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 Yes. Yep. <sighs> I know it's yeah. frustrating. It, it's and Moody's probably going to go to the. Steelers or the Ravens or the Patriots that run that multiple power run scheme. It'll be fit. And he's going to be a good. He's going to be a good fit and a good shoe in for an organi- organization like that. If an organization like that takes a chance on Moody, I got a true or false for you. Do those organizations know who they are? True or false? True. True. They know who they are. Do the Denver Broncos really know who they are? False. No. False. Yeah. No. No. They don't. They absolutely don't. Spaghetti against the wall. What sticks? Hey, we need another and, has been over here. They need a band aid over there. It, this uh, this organization for the Denver Broncos isn't into uh, developmental, isn't into uh, player stability, isn't into organizational stability. And what this organization, I believe, is more focused on is getting a new stadium, getting a new New Jersey style getting the draft and building shopping malls. And, and I, I, I just, I just want to ask this to the organization directly. Is that what you really want? Because if you go down that road, you're going to become, if you go down that road, you're going to become the jets. You're going to become the 76 Buccaneers or the seventies Buccaneers, which I believe we already are. We are the seventies. The nineties yeah. Raiders. You guys, uh, organization, directly at Dove Valley. Please. And 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 I'm just saying, please look at what Pat Bullen did and the difference between Pat Bullen and what John Elway did. Please. Because there's a major, major, major difference. Well I want to talk about this just really quick. I just really want to touch on that really, really quick. You know, when they were bringing all these different people on to do all the multiple things John Elway was doing, they have people, we got George Payton being a GM. We have uh, the guy, one guy doing player per, uh, player personnel. We got another guy coming in from the executive, from the NFL, doing the presidential stuff, okay? The, the president stuff. I am I am intrigued by that Damian Leach guy, but 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 there's a caveat. Well, I got a point. I'll, I got I'm trying to make a point. I got a point to make. How come there's? It speaks volumes when one guy thinks he can do all that stuff. Plus, be a head coach. Plus, be a point. scout. Tap 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 tap. No no. At the draft room. Tap 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 tap. Be up there with the binoculars. No 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 no. No. You know, being the offensive coordinator. You know, remember the um, uh, you, you sit there watching the play by play, you know, and then I, I bring that up and whoop, you don't see that anymore. Uh, so does that speak volumes about what the ego of one person that thinks they can do all of that? They want that. They have to have that control, that kind of control. To elevate your point even more, we have to. This isn't us hating John Elway, the player, because there's a difference. John Elway is the player is going to go down as the, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And I truly believe that. But there's another point. If John Elway didn't have Pat Bullen in that backing with John Beak, Alex Gibbs, and that whole entire co- uh, scouting department and coaching staff building the team around John, 
he would have never won two Super Bowls. That in that his is a major point. That's the it, that's that's what the they haven't they all haven't learned that lesson. Dove Valley, I don't care who. I don't think John Elway's learned that lesson. Well, it's all about him. Obviously, if you're that if your ego's that big that you you think you're going to be the president, you think you're going to be uh, player personnel, you think you're going to be the scout, you're going to be the head go. You think you're going to be all that. You're you're that's that's Al Davis. You're getting into Jerry Jones, Al Davis territory. Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder. And, you know, I, I just that's and I think it's we've just seen the worst of all that in him. Everything I ever needed to know about running a football team, I learned from Al Davis. Just unbelievable. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And when, when it comes to the Super Bowl 50 championship run, like you said, and we, we've talked about this many, many, many times, he wanted Vance Joseph as his defense coordinator, not Wade Phillips. And who told Elway to hire Wade Phillips, or who hired Wade Phillips? Pat Bullen, right? Yeah, Paul, Pat, Bullen. Pat Bullen put a leash on John Elway to keep him from yes. hiring Vance Johnson. Vance Joseph. <laughs> Vance Johnson. Uh, but uh, I know, I know. Uh, and also to the point of who really brought in Peyton Manning, it was Pat Bullen. And uh, Peyton Manning said it in his opening press conference with Denver. The reason I came to Denver is because of that man at the top, Pat yeah, Bullen, made me sign the dotted Bullen. line. Well, you yeah. know, I did. I do have a disclaimer on it, and I, I thought about. It, I thought, you know, I, I, I really think if John Elway wasn't even in the building, it's probably possible they would have passed on Peyton Manning to with with Adam Peters to actually start building the franchise up from the bottom. You know, they they would have far gone the the Peyton Manning project, and there would have. I don't think there would have been a thought in their head to get him. I I think what. I, I disagree with you to that degree because I think the team was already built to bring in a Peyton Manning. And, and it's not to say you are wrong, but my point my point is I think what would have happened is after 2014, they would have kind of just started to slowly integrate into that, okay, now we got to bring in some more player personnel. Let's get into that rebuilding phase. Not saying Peyton Manning wasn't great, but the point at hand, the player personnel started to, you know, started to crumble a little bit as you saw after Super Bowl 50, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and now here in well, 2022, like you don't Wolf have said. the same depth as you did. No, it's like Derek Wolf said, they just got rid of everybody. He said, what did you yep. see with the Ravens? What did, what did, there you go. What did Derek Wolf say about the Ravens? He says, they develop people. They keep people. They 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 have this culture of of yeah. players developing players, and they have a sound core of players. That's why they're always in the hunt for the playoffs, a serious playoff, not a pretending. I I'm so happy to be there. <laughs> you know none of that stuff. You know, and then my problem with what they do is they got a quarterback running around like a chicken with his head cut off, who's capable of being a pocket quarterback. But that's another. But that's what Derek Wool said is that they have a core foundation of development Correct. and retention. Yeah. And he said, well, you know, what did they do? They got they what did Elway do? He just didn't use the E word. He got rid of all, all the dogs, he got rid of everybody, everybody, everybody. That's what that's what Talib said. He's getting and rid it's of the still dogs. Going on to this day, as far as I'm concerned, we're oh, we overhyped people like Justin Simmons, who in no way but need is no way of first. No. He's not he's not at top anything, really, in my opinion. He's out there, you know, shows up. In the uh, NFL top one hundred, and to re you know, rekindle that point, the NFL top one hundred, he had what was it? There was like three to five other safeties ahead of Simmons in the NFL top one hundred. So Jesse Bates didn't make it. I just want to let you know he did not make I know. It's that, a that, that is a slap. That's a true slap in the face. Slap in the face. Like yeah. I said, if I'm him, the only thing I did is help you get to the Super Bowl. But you know, that's all I did. You know, I mean, it's the, again what he did speaks for itself. But uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. So both sides, I guess. The other thing is Garrett Bowles. Okay, here's a guy that needs the reps to keep you know to to help not call the calls. You know, it's it's overhype, 
oversell, get rid of patch patchwork orange. Yesterday's used to be has been. It's just it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. So anyway, yeah. we got new people. They they're bringing them in. You were going to talk about that. So and I so rudely interrupted you. About well, you didn't really interrupt me. Well, you said the president. You really liked that. I, I like Damian Leach, but I have to see what happens. I like what he said. He actually acknowledged Pat Bullen, and he actually brought light to the fact that, you know, we're, we're, we want to turn the page. And and that and that that is music to my ears because I didn't hear Rob Bolton or Greg Penner say that. They were just, you know, trying to, you know, it will sound like know, round the troops. It sounded like it just a just okay. I'm reading the script. Yeah, that's your Denver Broncos, you know, reading the script. So that's all I got for that's all I got from uh, Rob Walton, you know, is, oh, I get a 30 second flash commercial. And yeah, 30 second little stand up. Yeah, I love the team. Next. What team is it? Oh, the Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. OK. It's kind of like <laughs> yeah. what I got out of that. Uh, my lieutenant will take care of that. I will uh, may see in a couple of years from now. Oh, yeah, yay. I agree. Yay. OK, well, now let's getting... bring... go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I think you were going to go right when I was going to say. Go ahead. Yeah, well, this brings us to our next uh, uh, unkindly cuts, and that is the guy the, uh, named Malik Reed. Oh, well, we didn't cut him. We traded him. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, we got rid of him. How about that? We could just go with that. We got rid of him. Do this, let me just ask this question. Do the Steelers, do they know something about defense? Yeah. Okay. I know Broncos like to say top five, top five. I would say at least top five when it comes to defense, but they got rid of the one guy that probably held it together for the three years he was here. <clears throat> That's all seemingly what I'm seeing in preseason anyway. It's seemingly starting to unravel. So, did you get rid of an actual edge guy for a guy a, a guy who should not be an edge guy, who should... <laughs> yeah. Be yeah, a that's start what we did. middle linebacker with another guy starting that depth process that you know we I know. Tampa Bay, 1972, man. Just, it's uh it, it's um that was that that really frustrated me when I saw the news come across uh my screen today. Um it it's hard to put into words, you know, I Malik Reed is a guy that I think was so un, unappreciated here for the Denver Broncos. I don't think that he got the respect that he deserves. I thought he was a damn good player. What I, what I say that he is the better overall player between him and Baron Browning. No, I think Baron Browning is more athletically gifted in terms of his style of play, but Again, you are signaling to me that um, I, I don't think you know what you're doing. I, I honestly don't know what they are doing with this whole They And George Payton has to come out and say that we have a deep edge group in the Denver Broncos 53-man uh, roster, which I completely disagree with because Baron Browning is not an outside linebacker. And I've done film review. After film review, after film review, after film review, pointing out the facts that Baron Browning isn't a consistent outside linebacker. Neither is Nick Burrito. And you would rather suffer the middle of your field. You really think that I'm going to go into this season expecting Josie Jewell, Alex Singleton, Justin Sternad as my middle linebackers? I can't go along with that. And I cannot sit here getting a sixth or seventh round back for Malik Reed. That's all you got. You couldn't have gotten back maybe another edge piece or maybe get a depth middle linebacker or maybe go get a depth interior defense lineman. Never that. Hey, let me look into my plastic ball. I don't have a crystal, but I got a plastic ball into the future. I'll look into the future. You tell me if this doesn't sound right. Once this organization realizes that Browning isn't what they thought, it'll all be his fault, of course, uh, and they will drum him out of town. 
How much you want to? How much do you, you do? You have like five bucks. You want to bet me on that? No, I do not have five bucks with me currently. Would you take that bet that I I am going to wager a bet with somebody? But he's going to be the best. Okay, Mister, it's going to be the best. I believe that he's going to be drummed out of town, L.A. style. It's just, just I can feel it. I, it just can feel it. That it didn't work out. It didn't turn out the way they they you know they they sold it. They oversold it. And it's going to be he's a bum. Get rid of him. Don't 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 bother putting him in the middle. No, don't, don't. just 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 move on. Maybe trade him somewhere, and they'll put him in the middle. That's my prediction for Baron Browning moving forward, and the Denver Broncos. I mean, that's not a illogical prediction. I mean, that's a logical prediction, I believe. That's but the problem the, uh... with the organization. That is just the rudimentary problem with this organization. Getting people out of position, not recognizing what you got, and but getting them out of position because you can only focus edge, 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 edge. I want to get Eddie on. We were talking about because he was telling me as soon as the Saints got away from that and started doing the inside-out approach, that's when things started to click, and that's when things started to click for Breeze. Yeah, I, you, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, and I think what you just said about moving players out of position, doing this, that, and the third, I think it's going to man itself it, itself again for the seventh straight year we've been through this. And then, um, yeah, it, it's just another another disappointment on the hands of this organization that I just don't think recognizes the players that they have. I think they're so, they're so, you know, trained on these has-beens, used-to-bees, all these yesterday's. players that have name yesterdays and, you know, name value that, you know, they just don't want to take the time to develop. They don't want to take the time to actually do things correctly. They just want to think about their legacy and, uh, and in terms of the Denver Broncos organization, they don't they don't really value uh, what the good teams around the NFL value. They they don't value that, unfortunately, which sucks. I really do think that these new people coming in are going to have to whether however they do it, just cut that umbilical cord, that Elway umbilical cord, get it all of that out the door. And it may mean that uh, Peyton goes out the door. It may mean Hackett goes out the door. That defensive coaching staff goes out the door. I think what I think uh, what you're going to see is I think they're going to learn the hard way. I think that this is an organization that unfortunately it, that is going to learn the hard way. And I do not want that for the Denver Broncos. But at the end of the day, you guys have put yourself in this situation to fail, unfortunately. When, yes, when you look at the depth, and starting from I the know. top, I mean, it's trouble. From, in my, from what I see with my eyeballs, you're in and you're out. It's, it's trouble from the from the starters on down, with a few exceptions. A few exceptions. Well, I think it's not from the starters on down. I think it's from the organization on down. Like, well, correct, correct. I mean, yes, I'm sorry, correct. Uh, correct. That's actually even better, yeah. The organization on down. And I also want to uh, bring this up as well. Um, I just want to pat myself on the back for this Matt Hennison making the 53-man roster. He was a yeah, s- absolutely. seventh-round pick. Seventh-round pick, this guy. Uh, he beat out McTelvin Ajim, and uh, I'm really proud of this guy. I got laughed at. I got bombarded with, you know, you suck. You don't know what you're watching. You don't know what you're listening to. And, again... Matt Hennison and Eric Trickle. Um, I hope that you can understand that I know what I'm talking about here. And I'm not joking around when I do film review. I take this stuff very seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's why all your picks are boom, boom, boom. And we're talking later round picks. Later round, later round. Boom, 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 boom. They're difference makers. Yeah, I just did a film review. Why an NFL team isn't calling you up is beyond me. But... Yeah. It's like Tom Brady. Tom Brady said something about that. Um, they're just not really always that bright. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Yeah. So I, that's about all I have to say about 
Uh, although you, uh, what about Austin? You didn't you take a lot of crap that Mister? Yeah, Trump I got a lot of crap. Doing his best, Justin he, Simmons. Yeah, I got a lot of crap for the Blashawn Austin uh, signing. I said that. Um, I said that it wasn't going to work out. He wasn't going to make the team. I have film review on this channel. Um, if you want to link it, you can. Uh, I said that um, he isn't going to work out. He always plays 10 yards off. He gives the receivers way too much room to get off of their uh, set fast and all the above. And, again, look where the Vikings and the Bills and the Cowboys were attacking. They were attacking his side of the field the entire game because he would play 10, 15 yards off of a receiver. All uh, Justin Simmons. And I don't know how you can get an illegal contact from a corner. I mean, that just – that was the nail. I'm just like, wow, wow. What a, what, a, what a prototypical John Elway signing. That, yeah. That's just the definition of it. Personal bubble. I want to say this about your Hennison. Out of everybody they drafted, everybody they drafted, he was one of the bright spots. I think I, – I disagree. I think Montreal Washington has done some really good things. I uh, said one of them. I said one of them. Okay. Them. I said one okay. of the bright spots. Other than Washington, uh, was Seth Williams? Luke Wattenberg. Lou Wattenberg made the roster. Proud of him. I mean, you got to be proud of that. I mean, he even made the roster. I mean, that's crazy. Lou Wattenberg, who struggled, I would have probably tried and get him on the practice squad for him to get more developed. And well, they, they, I think, no, Luke, yeah, yeah. And you never know. He may end up being put on a practice squad. Correct. Um, but overall, the their draft. What, what? How would you? What did you graded it? What was your grade for the draft? I think it was a D plus. How is that looking so far? I think it's. Uh, I think it's rung true so far, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean their top picks are all washed out. Um, well, Dolcich, maybe one day, perhaps could be, maybe some, you know, perhaps. Well, he better be. He better, in my opinion. He better be. He better be like Kelsey. He better be up there. And can we pat ourselves on the back with the Eric Sauber beating out Eric Tomlinson? I mean, I I wasn't really shocked about that. Eric Tomlinson got cut. Um, yeah, I never that, liked that, it. Yeah, that was interesting too because uh, I thought Tom you, wasn't. Didn't they have a tight end they got from the Ravens? Too. Oh, the the Ravens. No, that that was Tomlinson. Tomlinson played for the Ravens last okay, year. Okay, so he did play for. Were were there? He was uh, primarily uh, blocking. Uh, blocker. Blocker. Uh, I thought he. I thought. You know, look, he's up against third string, so I don't. You know. I thought. I, thought he, had the gonna, I, I know. I, should, I probably should say this, but I thought he actually. Could don't say. Open, I thought he could get don't open better it. than. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, that's I'm going to get a lot of heat for that one. Oh, God, I just I can't watch it for another season. I know I can't I can't watch. I can't I, I just I can't stand Judy. I can't I don't I don't know. Just something so, something's off with him. I just I don't. It just I just get I just get bust vibes with him, unfortunately, which well, sucks. I say which sucks. We gave away pop for plop. It's all pop for plop. Pop for plot. Yep, exactly. Yep. You got a plop. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyway, I think I think you hit the draft just right too. I you know, I know it's so negative, but it is the truth. And uh, you know, until we look ourselves in the mirror and say we need to make changes, there will be no changes. So hopefully, I agree. The new people you like over time, because, you know, we both said this is going to take time. Take we'll time. Start, it's not going to yeah, change overnight. Yeah. Just say, yeah, we're just doing, we're going to go in a little different direction this time. And hopefully that direction is, makes sense. Let's yeah. start with that. Yeah. What makes sense? Maybe he's not exactly what Colby wanted or me, but maybe it's along the lines. We're starting to inch our way over to making sense, you know. You start building those building blocks again like Pat Bowling did. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else? That's it for me. Me too. I got to go out and finish working on the car. All right. I hope mom doesn't yell at you. I'll see you up there. I'll take out the trash. Yeah. Wash yeah. the dishes. Yeah. I'll see you up there. All right. All right. Yeah. Make sure. Could you have emptied the trash out this time? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you uh, do the dishes? Yeah, I, I said after it. Dungeons and Dragons, we have it. Go ahead. And... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Did yeah. you bring the? Did you bring the hard liquor and the? Uh, you know, the oh, pretzels I and always, stuff. I always bring the hard liquor. <laughs> okay. A little bit of hard liquor. A little bit of hard liquor. Yeah. Take care. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye.